Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm Admiral Pegasus and this is the Pegasus Show and on today's show we are going to be looking at our epic officer for the Enterprise arc, Jonathan Archer. Now this officer has two abilities, the captain's ability and a officer ability. We will be looking at them. We will also be putting him in action against his niche, well, against the I guess is um, what he's supposed to do. And we shall have a look and compare him with, let's just say, the standard crew that we've become accustomed to over the last few weeks. But before we get into all that, if you'd like to know when I go live or release a new video, please subscribe to the channel. So, Jonathan Archer, son of famed Henry, Dr. Henry Archer, and also captain of Earth's first Warp 5 vessel which, needless to say, sent Starfleet out into the deep space cosmos, encountered the Nauticans, um, encountered the Zindi, and Jonathan Archer was also responsible for the first actual, you know, on-screen showing of a potential, yes, I say potential, prime directive, because he actually did quote the lines of, Someday, my people is going to come up with a doctrine or a directive that says what we can and cannot do out here. Now, for those of you who remember, this was the episode where they was um, encountered a ship floating in space, which had two astronauts on it, pre-warp civilization. They spent a year getting out as far as they did, and the Enterprise took them back to the home world to find out that they were dying, basically, from evolution. There was two different species on the planet, similar to what we had here on Earth, on Earth as Homo, Homo sapiens, and um, the Neanderthals. Obviously, on Earth, the Neanderthals died out, and Homo sapiens carried on. On this particular world, both civilizations carried on till one was actually far more advanced than the other, and it just turned out the more advanced civilization, their time was pretty much up, and it was time for the um, the lesser of the two species to actually evolve and thrive. The mink, if I remember correctly, was the lesser species. I can't remember the name of the other one, but I'm sure you'll drop it in the comment section down below. But Jonathan Archer was responsible for a lot of things in the Federation, in Starfleet, which also involved the formation of the United Federation of Planets. So there's a quick big back story on Archer. And yes, I did not mention the whole Zindi thing. He was the first captain to actually, you know, violate um, the Geneva Convention, you could say, although it wasn't against humans, it was against the Anasarian by threat, by actually torturing him in an airlock. And um, yeah, a lot of things changed in the Zendafic Expanse for Archer. So, and the image that we have here is literally of Jonathan Archer after the Zindi incident. Not looking as young, as peppy as he was. More worn down. I've done things I shouldn't have done. But anyway, this is how we'll be sourcing him this month. We've got an SMS and an SLB. This is weekend two. I've already completed the, SL, the SMS and I got a, a reasonable standing of 10th. In the SLB last week, which allowed me to gain a fair whack of shards. But there are other shards in the um, missions, in the battle pass at the time of recording. Sourcing beyond part two, yeah, event store, if we get there. But if you are watching this after um, Enterprise part three or part four, whichever one the event store drops in, it depends on how far we actually go. <coughs> um, Jonathan Archer sourcing, I'm not 100% sure of, but I'm sure that will be a rehash of the officer sourcing video, which I've not long released. But anyway, let's have a look at these two events first. So first of all, we got the S SMS, the Heroic, which basically, yes, you do need to spend a fair whack. Last weekend, I did actually complete this. In total, as you can see, you've got... Uh, 50 shards that's less than half because he needs 115 shards to unlock 
So, and then obviously we've got the new scoring meta, which they bought out for 2024. It's not a scoring meta a lot of us are actually happy with. But for me, it's like in my particular bracket, do I really need G6 and G5 materials? No, my bracket goes as high as 49. That is it. We don't need G5 stuff yet because we're not doing any G5. So realistically, we do not need those particular scoring points in our bracket. <coughs> but the brackets are universal. So obviously we have the brackets and they just put the points up for every single bracket that there actually is. Now, what there is for the G6 bracket, I'm presuming it starts at 59 and goes all the way through to 70. Because again, at the time of recording, we still don't have a lot of level 61 plus players. So again, they haven't really got their um, own brackets. Now, Kodos to Scopely lately, they have actually done an SLB, which was about 24 hours ago from time of recording. An ex-SLB. Not quite sure what event they actually ran, but it was literally cross server to allow players in the 60s brackets, and they were broken down into specific brackets to compete with each other. So Kodos to Scopely for doing that. But obviously we end up back on normal brackets for this SMS. So if we jump into the um, SLB, this is pretty standard. This is material spend and directed spend, which is your rares and your epics. So like I said last time, I finished 10th, so I got 40 shards. On top of the um, 50 I got from the SMS, so that's 90 shards. So that only left me 25 shards left to find. So I've got a few of them out of the battle pass and out of missions. Um, I'm not quite sure if there's been one or two in events, but there's obviously a couple of shards on the um, ARC launch day. <coughs> so just a quick throw in as well for this um, SLB. Exchange, Borg, Doomsday and Mahadas do not score. This is solo Mahadas and FKRs and Cardassians. So just be aware of that. So... Let's actually get on with this and actually talk about Archer himself. Now, obviously we'll need to jump into Officers and I'll just go straight down to the bottom because he is a recent new epic for me. Here he is. Of the NX01, NX Enterprise NX01 Synergy, as you can see, I've already got him up to level 5 because obviously that's the first thing you do as soon as you unlock an Officer. No point leaving him at level 1. Get him straight up to level 5. So, as you can see, he's only got a Captain ability and an Officer ability. The captain's ability is basically increasing loot from Zindi Hostiles. Now, note this one. This is not like um, Enterprise E Picard. This is not Firelight like 5 of 11. This is not like the below deck ability for the Doctor for the Voyager crew. This is specific. This is Zindi Hostiles only. Now, this starts at 300%. And when synergied with another command officer, he'll only gain 50%. On top of that, um... With science or engineering, he will be 100% synergy. So if you've got synergy on both sides, full synergy, you have the chance to do 500% synergy. Now, we will show you this particular <coughs> feature in action today, on today's video. You know me, I always show you the battles and I show you what, what you could get with the standard crew and what you're going to get with the new one. So we will do a standard crew. We will do the max loot crew as well. Because I want to show how, in my personal opinion, this is far more effective than the max loot crew. So we, we will literally show you that. But first of all, officer's ability, when you take damage from a hostile or another player. So this is PvE and PvP, not um, Amada's. Um, I'm not quite sure about gold, but you never know. Jonathan Archer increases your critical hit damage by 5%. And as you can see, just in the title itself, it says when at rank 5 is 50%. Now, it's nice that Scopely have actually done that for us. They've actually put that what it is maxed out. So we don't have to put up all these crazy screenshots to show you what they max out in, um, yeah, at each rank. Of course, I've still done it. You think I'm really going to just rely on that? Nah. But yeah, 50%, that's not, that's actually pretty juicy when you actually think about it. <coughs> now, for me, obviously, there's only one officer I've actually got available to synergize him with, 
And that is going to be Trip Tucker because to Paul, I never got last month. As you can see, I'm nine shard short. Shran this month, again, still not unlocked him. And given the uh, events that we've got running at current, which is the recruit Shran meta. Yeah, I'm not going to unlock him at that neither. It's only like a ridiculous number of shards. So, but they're both mining officers. I don't really need anything out of them particular two officers. They'll just be for synergy. That is it. But anyway, so let's get on with actually um, showing you what he can do. So I'm going to send Discovery out to actually smack a couple of targets. I've got two ships lined up. I've got the Valdor and I've got the um, Kelvin. Now the Kelvin is running PMC. Let's just quickly show you that. Because <coughs> this is the one where I'm actually going to be putting... Um... Oh, bleh. Yeah, putting Archer on. This is the ship I'm going to be putting Archer on because he's not ship specific, so do not worry. <coughs> but then I've also got the Max Loot crew on the Valdor, which includes the Doctor Below deck. Now, I'm not going to take these particularly too high, but you will get to see how Archer actually works. But first of all, let's start with the base level and show you where we were at. Okay, so I've brought the ships over. Now, what I will just say is what I did notice, there is a trader running around here. So I am literally going to be sending the Valdor at that. But this is going to give you an idea of the max, um, the max loot side of things as we do this. Because one thing you want, you want to be doing is you want to be hitting these traders. Now, normally I would use the Newton to give me that extra loot boost because obviously it's natural ship's ability is loot boost. But sadly... I wanted to use base ships and the Lord and behold, Sod's Law, a freaking trader, is actually in the system. So, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not going to be getting the full 2,000 odd that I would normally get. I'd probably be hitting around about 1,500 out of this with the max loot crew. So, as you can see, this thing's running 437. And, obviously, we're running Picard with a 60% boost. Data, which gives a 40% synergy. So, uh, 5 of 11, which adds another 80% on the side. And they go, oh, we still broke 2,000. We still broke 2,000. And then I'll see the Doctor below deck. So there you saw, near enough, a, what is it, four, five, four and a half times increase. So that that's the power of max loot. So now we're going to shake it up a little bit with the max loot. In the fact that we're going to run against a different hostile with 35. And then what we'll do is we'll take away what loot we actually had. So let's get the calculator up quickly. So we need uh, 2163 minus. <coughs> and then we'll take away the actual loot that we actually got for this one. So and then that'll give us our total. 2336, so 2336. So there we got 173 out of that, which is not too bad. So I can't remember what, what it was. You saw what it was though. So that is your max loot. Now let's bring the, um, the, uh, blah, blah, blah. let's find a battleship. Bring the Kelvin in again. Here we go, 35. That's what it was. It was 35. I remember that now. So all we're basically going to see out of this then is a pure 35 um, loot. That's it. Now, obviously, I've recalled the discovery so I can bring <coughs> the Kelvin straight home. So here we go. Oh, yeah, 105. Oh, I forgot. I've got Zindi Escalation as well. Yeah, that's a 200% boost. So 35 times 3, basically, that is 105. So, there we go. There's our base figures. Basically, there's not a lot we're going to say about that. We can say about that, really. So, get the Discovery back to the base, and then we're going to summon the Kelvin over, repair it, and put Archer on. Okay, so first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show Archer working at his base. So, his base is going to be 300. This is no synergy whatsoever. This is nobody else below deck, so we're not going to be relying on anything else. So what we'll do is we'll um, get Discovery back out here. 
because I forgot to send it out. And then of course we'll target another battleship. So let's get the Kelvin in straight away. I'll stop discovery and we'll pick this battleship right here. Set a course to intercept it. I'll, I'll tell you what, we'll take that one on because it's back, coming back on us. So that's not too bad. Let's get that. So again, we're looking at 35. So ideally, we're looking at 105 again with the boost. But archers, 300%. Target lost, 210. 210. He is literally doubled. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, that should actually be more because he's got 300%. <clears throat> yes, he's got 300%. However, that's base. So the base is 35. So basically what he's doing is taking that three, he's taking that base of 35 straight away, times it by three. So that's 105. Okay, so he's already taken your that base figure of 35 and he's times it by three. Then you're adding on what you would have got anyway. Because remember, their ability, same as research, is an addition on top of base. So let's just say I didn't have that in the escalation, right? I didn't have it. So basically, I would have only got 35, right? 35, straight out. Arch comes along and times that by three. So that's 105. But then I still got to add the base into that mix as well. So that's not going to be just 105. That's now going to be 140. So like I say, I've got us in de-escalation, which basically trebles what I get. But it's only 200%. But again, that's in de-escalation. 200%. Well, that's 35 times 2. That's 70. Adding your base. That's another 35. That's 105. Hence the reason why... That is now 210. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. Now we're going to send Void um, Discover. Uh, blah, blah, blah. We're going to send the Kelvin home. And now we're going to put Trip on it and add that extra 100%. So that should be an extra 35 on top. Okay, so now we've got Trip on. So now we're running 400%. So again, I'm just going to show you this. And then I'm going to leave, what we'll do is we'll jump to a higher level system. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it after that one to make sure it's 35. Okay, so I'm sure we can find a 35 in here, 37, bloody hell. There we go. So we're going to send the Kelvin after that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, send Discovery home. Because now I'm going to bring the Newton out and just show you the effectiveness of um, Max Loot. Well, actually, um, putting Archer as part of your Max Loot crew. So I've got to get the um, Valdor repaired. Because uh, that's where the Max Loot crew is. So, 35. There we go. There's your extra 35. Remember, the last one was 210. Add that extra 35 in. And boom. There is your loot. So that is Archer working with Max Synergy. Now, let's go. Let, let's actually put the Newton on there, Max Loot Crew, and show you what kind of numbers you could be looking at the higher up. Now, if you are a low-level player as well, I am going to throw this in there, that you do have the ability to um, use him as well against those 35s, against... Um, 34s and 35s, yes, they are small amounts of loot, like 1 and 3, but again, still absolutely brilliant to use. Now, we will look at the um, battle logs quickly as well, just to show Archer's critical damage actually working, and how, show, uh, roughly how much it's actually procking. So, right, now, we need to do this... Um, Archer, yes. Um. Now, I'm leaving 5 of 11 on the bridge because she actually has the most 
loot to gain. So basically what I'm doing now for Zindi, Zindi only, I'm now making sure that I've got that max loot, I've got the Doctor, and like I say, I'm also going to be putting the Newton in as well. So the Newton is also going to give me that extra 60% loot as well. <coughs> so now I've actually just literally thought, why am I going after those 42s? Because ultimately at the end of the day, that's going to skew with my results a little bit more. So um, we'll jump back into that 40 system and summon the Newton. And then we can show just how good the numbers are going to be. And then what we'll do is we'll take um, the Newton to a higher level system as well. Um, this is the system I normally grind in. And I'm, I get usually about 1,800 to 2,100 per trip. Depends on how good things are for me that day. Um, so we've got a battleship there. 37... That's an explorer. There's another battleship. I want to try and keep this consistent as much as possible. So you're coming back. Nope. And we've got a battleship there. 37. So we're not going to find a battleship that's got 35 on it. So... Here we go. So we'll go after the Explorer because that's got 35 on it. We're not bothered about the class of ship. We're more bothered about the loot. So again, this run I'm using Captain Archer as, as Captain. Trip on the side, 5 of 11 on the bridge. The Doctor below deck. That's all the loot gathering officers I have working together in tandem with the Newton's natural ship ability. Now, don't forget I've got that Zindi Escalation at level 5 as well. So, while we're just waiting on that to do the killing, I'm just going to quickly reset this node. And the Newton is finally won. There we go. That's using everything. Now... You could argue, what would I get with a Max Loot crew? Tell you what, why don't we have a look? Okay, so I'm running the Max Loot crew. Now, the big difference I'm going to fire in here is the Enterprise E crew are running isolytic damage too. So now this could be a contributing factor when it comes to taking on high level hostiles how are you going to do are you going to walk away with decent loot there you go that's 105 difference that is 105 difference oh wait hang on a minute that's archer's captain's ability straight out Ooh. that's archer's captain's ability straight out so that's a significant change, a massive change. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this out to actually go kill some 42s and then we're going to run Archer Crew against it. Yeah, so there's going to be a hell of a lot of head hitting going on here. Okay, so here we are in the system and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go after a load of battleships and explorers. I don't tend to go after the Interceptors because they're against the Battle Triangle. I try to keep it within Battle Triangle or equal. So, now, in All Light Lord, I'm looking around about, um, given the fact that I've already taken on one hostile, I'd probably say around about 1,800, 1,900 loot out of this. Now, I did say that there is going to be isolytic damage involved as well, so you're going to have to watch out for that. So I'm just going to complete the run around here. Then I'm going to jump on and then get um, the arch crew. I'm just going to keep going until the ship is basically destroyed. Okay, so here we are then. Obviously, just under the 2,000 
that we actually got because remember we did start off with about 194 when we entered this system oh that ship's disappeared so what we're going to do is going to get the newton blown up have a quick look at the some of the battle logs and show you how many ships it's actually took on in fact we can show you that now and um yeah so for doing these in the hostiles then so we're starting right here We've got six Zindi hostiles. Six Zindi hostiles, and we've ended up with just under 2,000 of the loot. So, obviously, the Newton's been destroyed. Okay, so the Newton's on its way back. So, let's have a quick look at the battle logs. Now, remember, we're looking more at the isolated damage here. So as you can see, data's already started with the isolated damage and then Picard comes in with his isolated damage for three rounds. So basically we're getting a big boost to um, critical, uh, blah, 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 to, oh monkeys, isolated damage. Now, take a look at that critical shot up there. Yes, we got a critical shot. So that's going to be zero. So what we're going to be looking at is seeing how Archer, does he actually add anything back to that? Now, my theory is no. For those of you who are already unlocked him and looking at this, you already know the answer to that question. Me, I don't. But we are looking at a 5% increase to critical damage. Well, I don't know if that's actually gonna work in this instance. But we can always have a look. Okay, so here we are back in the system. So what we're going to do is going to go straight into attacking. Again, battleships and explorers. Keeping that triangle either equal or we've got the one over on them. So we're already looking around. Yeah. So again, I'm looking at number of hostiles destroyed and the amount of loot that we actually obtain from this. So two hostiles already and we're nearly a thousand already. So yeah, that's not too bad. But here we go, edit to the other end. Okay, so here we are then. It looks like um, either this one's going to kill us or no, it's not actually. Uh, we're not dead, but we are. Yeah, we're pretty much there. But we have actually massively increased the amount of loot we're getting. And I'm not even going to try taking him on with a badly damaged Newton. Because I will lose all day long. But again, 2,929 when the previous one was way less than that so let's have a look at the battle log then the destroyed one will come in just shortly so let's have a quick look then so put that one at the bottom oh still six zindi hostiles it is still six zindi hostiles so that's exactly about the same as the previous one with isolated damage now Let's have a look at the battle log. Now, before we go any further, let's just bring up this quickly. Faith of the Heart ability. When attacking a hostile, Jonathan Archer increases critical damage by 5% for two rounds. This ability does stack. So, is he now restoring at least 
some sort of damage to negate the Zindi's ship's ability. Finally, I found one. Okay, so his ability is not really actually doing anything against the Zindi hostiles. Go figure. But still, his loot ability definitely works. So we've actually proven that already. What was it, about a thousand difference? So that's Jonathan Archer for you. Let me know in the comment section what you think of Jonathan Archer. Archer. Is he actually going to be a valuable officer for you against the Zindi? And for those who have said, well, what about the aquatics? I can't even scratch their bloody hull, let alone do anything to them. So it's not going to be fair for me to actually shove him in there and see what happens. Because if this happens, yeah. So, I mean, we can go to the end of this battle log and see if there's, a, there's another critical damage there. Still zero. But, yeah. Standard damage and there's another critical. Still zero. So, yeah. So, realistically, Jonathan's archer's captain's ability, sorry, officer's ability is doing nothing. You're still going to need that critical damage floor. Yes, you are. But anyway, thank you for joining me. I'm Admiral Pegasus. I hope, despite all the edits, this show has been um, at least a revealing of how Jonathan Archer actually works. Me, this is my new Zindi crew. If I can still take on the same number of Zindi hostiles, even one shot is still more than what my previous run was. Okay, so as an add-in as well, um, this was brought up after the video was initially released. So, obviously, as you noticed, I would have probably unlisted it so nobody could see it. And I've added this edition. Now, why have I added this edition? Because somebody came to me and said, Pegasus, you've missed a crew. How, you, there's another crew you need to try. This loadout. Now, I have run some tests, and for the levels he was telling me that he was getting, he's, a, he's got a stronger pylum. His pylum is a lot stronger than mine. So, he's getting that extra loot bonus with the pylum. <coughs> Whereas mine's only level 35, I've got four slots available, which is absolutely fine. But the biggest change which actually confused me and he said it wasn't a loot officer that is an ideal it was harrison and the reason for harrison was this reducing enemy shields by 60 percent in the first round now is this very beneficial on a newton in all honesty i'd probably say not because of the newton's firing pattern However, on a pylum, it's a different story. Because the pylum has got that heavy frontal attack. Now, yes, the Newton has four weapons and it only finds his three energy weapons in the first round. Whereas the pylum has two kinetic weapons and an energy weapon. The kinetic weapons fire two shots each. The energy weapons fire three. That's seven shots in the first round. So, Harrison is going to be a great, great officer. Because basically what you're going to be doing is applying more damage straight away in that first round. Now, we, we all know that battleships like the Newton are ideal for PvE because they've got the good hull, hull health. They can literally grind it out, although they are slow as hell. <coughs> but in this case... I have to look at it and think, which one would be more beneficial? The Pylum or the Newton? The Pylum. Now, I will just th throw out there, having this below deck is going to be an absolute need as well because of the low deck abilities. If we um, bring it up, 
as you can see, we've got um, Tindy's whole health increase. So yeah, that's really gonna help. Uh, the Doctor for loot increase, so that's a, that's a no-brainer. Mariner for a weapons damage increase, and Bulma for his mitigation increase. So now you could potentially look at Tom Paris, but again, he needs specific stats below deck, and as you can see, <coughs> excuse me, on the far side there, attack and defense. I'm not exactly hitting the high levels. Now, my Harrison is tier one. Obviously, Wolf and Rider, shout out to Wolf and Rider because it was him who brought this to my attention. And he's on my server as well, 134. His, tier, his um, Harrison is tier two. So he's operating a 70% reduction to shields in that first round. So basically, that's an extra amount of damage getting through the shields. And his pylum is stronger than mine as well. He's been, he's been on 49 for a while. But he does have a stronger pylum than me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of battle logs that I ran with the crews. And including 5 of 11 as well. And also um, what I did originally miss was the um, suggested strategic crewing that Scopely have recommended. So this was me sending the pylum out. And obviously the pylum has got one seat short below deck. So which basically means I did not have Bulma. Which basically means my mitigations was not as good as it should have been. But ultimately, this obviously one beat me. I finished with a cargo of 2,750. Now, yes, that's less than the loot um, crew. However, I do have another reason why Harrison would be better than 5 of 11. So, now we've got to go find... The Newton ones. Like I said, with the um, firing pattern of the pylum, it's really going to kick ass. <coughs> now, it's 5 of 11 on this one. Obviously, this has got a completely different below deck on it as well. But as you can see, I took home 5,197 loot. Now, we're going to need the calculator for this one because... It's literally not a lot in it, in all honesty. So, that's with that one. That's how much I finished with that one. Yes, it means less kills, but that's that's fine. And then obviously we'll go with this one. Because this should be the one. Yep, defeat. So this is running Harrison. But four, oh, hello. Four, seven... One five. 482 loot difference. That's all it is between running 5 of 11 or Harrison. 482. But Harrison is giving me a lot more damage in the opening round. So again, we'll, let's get rid of the calculator. One round. That's all I've gone. So let's put myself in the middle as I usually would do. So again, it's reducing the amount of shields it's got available, <coughs> which means more damage is getting through. But again, um, yeah. So we're looking at what? Um, in the shields, 375,000 to the hull, nearly 800,000 there. Okay, so, yeah, it's looking pretty consistent. Oh, oh yeah, this only went one round because that's because my uh, Newton was pretty much destroyed. But if we actually look at one for the pile uh, without, without Harrison, just the first round. Not as much as getting through to that hole. Now, obviously, yes, I've actually blasted the um, shields away faster, so now we are literally laying onto the hull. But just these opening rounds, I'm not putting as much to the hull. Because the shields are stopping it. So this is where Harrison really does work. Harrison has a combat effective officer's ability. 
5 of 11 is not. It's not a combat ability. It's a, it's a, it's a loot increaser. That is it. Now, it will come down to how you want to do this. If you actually consider Harrison of any benefit to you, he can be sourced through the elite recruit section at uh, chess. So, yeah, go spend vast amounts of uh, faction credits, Federation faction credits, just to open up a few chests. I could take a chance now and try and get the last two shards I need to send him to tier two. But again, this, that's just wasting credits that I'm going to need for G5. So, now it will come down to how you feel and how you want to load out your crews. But in all honesty, Harrison is definitely worth chucking in there as another viable crew. <coughs> now, here we go. Here's a strategic crewing from Scopely. As you can see at the top, we've got, um, in fact, every single one of these is Archer and Tucker. Yes. So, we'll quickly cover what they mean. Janeway, Enterprise E. Picard or Data, which is going to give you the isolated boost, basically more damage from your isolated, um, isolated damage. Uh, Pig Beverly will be your next one, which is leaning on critical damage, her officer's ability, um, being that uh, giving you that critical chance increase. 5 of 11, we all know, loot crew, increasing your loot. Khan, in place of Hugh, apparently, to, apparently Khan will um, quickly improve your crit rate. One problem with that, have you got critical damage floor? If you've not got it, that one is a waste of time. That one is a pure waste of time. And then obviously you've got Gorkun or Lorca, um, which is increasing damage to your critical shots. Waste of time. Pink Beverly is also going to be a waste of time. <clears throat> Unless you've got critical damage floor, critical damage boosts are a complete and utter waste of time. A complete waste of time. So don't even try it. So the ideal ones you want to be looking at until you get that is the isolytic boost, 5 of 11. That is it. Or Harrison. So now I am going to say that Harrison is... Is going to be a decent one on this one. Get him to a higher tier if you can. Jesus Christ. And a pylum. I would highly recommend a pylum. <coughs> decent tier as well. A tier 7 pylum or higher. Would definitely be the best way to go on this one. Now if you do have any other crew suggestions. That you want to throw in. Please drop them in the comments section down below. But until then. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you found this video is interesting. We are still on our way to a thousand subscribers, so thank you very much to everyone who has subscribed already. If you wish to donate to the channel, the join button for membership is available. Also, links for PayPal and Cash App are in the video's description down below. So that's it for me. Thank you for joining me. I hope adding this in has proved... Is it educating as the rest of the video but until then i'm oh i will say though with harrison just a quick throw in here harrison stick with the level 40s because trust me it's not much cop against any higher the 40s and you still walk away with a decent amount of loot i'm admiral pegasus thank you for joining me stay safe live long and prosper and i shall catch you on the next one goodbye